Do you want to learn all about the Chase Trifecta? <laughs> I'm just messing with you guys, I swear. I'm just kidding. So in this video, I'm going to be talking about the Chase Trifecta, what exactly it is, and I'm actually not going to be talking about it in a way that you guys would think. For more videos like this one, hit that subscribe button. But for now, let's go ahead and get into the video. <laughs> What's up guys, it's Jay and welcome to Flashpoint where we're all about credit, credit cards, and other finance tips. If you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing. Also give this video a thumbs up, it really helps me out. And comment down below if you have no clue what the Chase Trifecta is or if you already know, comment down below, I really appreciate it. Okay, so I'm gonna start this video off just kind of explaining the Chase Trifecta. So the Chase Trifecta is basically one Sapphire card like the Sapphire Reserve, the Sapphire Preferred, the Chase Freedom, card which is a 5% rotating category no annual fee card and the Chase Freedom Unlimited which gives you 1.5% cash back on all regular purchases that are not in the bonus categories of either the Sapphire Reserve Preferred or the Chase Freedom. But the whole purpose behind having the Chase Trifecta is to maximize the amount of points that you get on every single purchase that you make. So if it's not in a bonus category, you would go to the Chase Freedom Unlimited and get that 1.5% cash back, which turns into 1.5 cents per point on anything that's not in the bonus categories of the Chase Freedom or the Sapphire cards. And that's basically maximizing your spend uh, on a daily basis just because if you tried to spend on anything outside of those bonus categories with the sapphire cards or with the chase freedom then you would only be receiving one point per dollar spent or one cent per point with the chase freedom so obviously 1.5 cents is a lot better than one cent that is the whole idea behind having the chase trifecta and so I'm going to tell you guys a different trifecta and a lot of people already know this, but in case you don't, I'm going to go over it and that's including the business cards. So I'm going to compare apples to apples. And one thing that is crazy is that with the Chase Sapphire Reserve, it is a $450 annual fee card, which comes with a $300 travel credit. Um, Obviously, people think that the travel credit is a lot easier to use with uh, Chase because travel is a very broad term, but you get three points on travel and three points on dining, I believe. I don't have the card, so I mean, I'm just kind of going off of what I've read about the card. And if you have the Chase Sapphire Preferred, you're only getting 2x on travel and 2x on dining, right? Everything else, you're getting one cent per point on the Sapphire Reserve or Sapphire Preferred, I'm sorry. Here's where this is a little different. So if you're not wanting to pay a $450 annual fee just to get three points per dollar on travel, well, you could get the Chase Inc. Preferred, which is a $95 annual fee, and still get 3X on travel and 3X on other categories, but travel is one of the categories that is included. So imagine that. You may not get the travel credit, like the $300 travel credit, but it's only $95 and you're still getting three points per dollar on travel. So, I mean, I think that is a pretty valuable card to have. Um, that is one card that I actually do have. Next, I'm going to go apples to apples with the Chase Sapphire Preferred and the Chase Freedom card along with the Chase Business Inc. Cash card. And so the crazy thing is, is that the Chase Inc. Cash card is a no annual fee card. The Chase Sapphire Preferred is a $95 annual fee card and it gets 2x on travel like I said but the Chase Inc cash card is a cashback card but you still earn 2x on travel and dining but you also get 5% cash back on a lot of business categories and so this card is honestly the best cashback card in my opinion and this is how you're able to maximize on everything now the comparison from the Chase Inc. Cash and the Chase Freedom. The Chase Inc. Cash has no rotating categories. They are set in stone. Basically for the life of the card, you're always going to be able to earn that 5% cash back on your cell phone, on you know business purchases, on office supply stores, uh, toll roads as I just found out because I just paid for some tolls and it just showed up and it showed on my statement five points. So I'm good with that. Um, yeah, and obviously you get 
2x on gas and 2x on uh, dining. So that's awesome there too. You literally will only get 5% cash back with the Chase Freedom on gas or anything if it's in that quarter's category. Meaning every three months they rotate categories. So one one quarter or you might see gas and grocery stores. You know, the next quarter you might see uh, home improvement stores. One, you might see Chase Pay. You might see anything like that. Toll roads, whatever it is. But the, the categories always rotate and you may not be able to utilize that on a yearly basis or at least on a quarterly basis. Let me rephrase that. Um, and with the Chase Inc. cash card, you're always going to earn that 5% cash back no matter what. So I think having the Chase Inc. preferred along with the Chase Inc. cash and also having the Chase Freedom card for those 5% rotating categories is amazing. Now, you could add that, that would be my trifecta in my opinion. I do have the Ink Preferred and the Ink uh, Cash Card, and I also do have the Sapphire Preferred and the Chase Freedom Card. But I'm thinking about downgrading my Sapphire Preferred to a Chase Freedom Unlimited, so that way I could still get 1.5% uh, cash back in any occasion, whatever it is, it doesn't matter. I don't really care about the sign up bonus for the Chase Freedom Unlimited just because it's not really much. Um, and I just don't feel like taking an inquiry for it. And I'm about to be over 524. So yeah, it, it just doesn't make sense for me to apply for the um, Chase Freedom Unlimited right now. So I'm okay with that. I'd rather just downgrade and get the benefits from my business cards and my personal cards and merge those together. So I guess you could potentially call it the Chase Quad Factor, but let's just go with the try because whatever, it's easier to understand. Um, but yeah, so if you're able to get business cards or if you don't know how to get business cards, it's not necessarily that difficult to accomplish. Um, basically anybody could qualify for business cards um, you just have to know about the specific processes to get those business cards and with the chase inc business cards they are the best sign up bonuses out there that exist right now because you can get 80,000 points with the chase inc preferred for hitting the minimum spend you can get 50,000 points in the form of 500 dollars cash back with the Chase Inc. cash, and if you end up getting the Chase Inc. Unlimited, you can get another 50,000 points or $500 cash back. So if you're not in the market to pay a $450 annual fee and you still wanna get the benefits, this is essentially a $95 setup a year to have all three of those cards or all four of those cards. You could have the Ink Preferred, you could have the Ink Cash and the Chase Freedom card, or you could add the Chase Freedom Unlimited, which will make four cards right there at only $95 because the only card that has an annual fee is the Chase Inc. Preferred, and that's $95 a year. If you're not really worried about impressing people uh, like me, I'm not, I don't, I don't really care much. So yeah, so I would go with that setup over anything because it's only $95 compared to if you had, you know, the original Chase Trifecta, then you're still going to pay $450. Obviously, people like to justify the $450 annual fee to $150 um, just because you get that $300 travel credit and you do get other perks along with it uh, like uh, airport lounge access, which effectively drop the annual fee to something less. But I still think that this is a better setup in terms of chase points because you can maximize your earnings and you can still have ultimate rewards points because the Chase Inc. Business Preferred card is an ultimate rewards earning card just like the Sapphire Reserve and the Sapphire Preferred. So you could always transfer those cash back points to the Inc. Preferred and redeem it for travel. A lot of people also rather have them just because if you try to redeem on Chase's travel portal then it's also 1.5 uh, cents per point no matter what. With the Chase Ink preferred and with the Chase Sapphire preferred, it's at 1.25 cents per point, no matter what. So a lot of people see that and uh, as value uh, in case some of the other redemptions are not able to get at a higher value. So 
yeah but you know guys i mean sometimes it doesn't really matter if you're new to the game and you're trying to avoid paying so many high annual fees or you just can't really justify paying the annual fee even though you're getting those credits then i would suggest getting the ink preferred and it's only 95 dollars. and if you get the other no annual fee cards then you're really maximizing the amount of points you can get on a yearly basis i'm literally going to be using my ink cash card like every month so i you know getting that five percent like and it's not rotating i don't have to worry about it i can just put everything on auto pay and i'm good that'll conclude today's video guys for more video updates hit that subscribe button if you found this information to be helpful give this video a thumbs up i really appreciate it share it with your friends drop a comment down below to let me know where you guys are with your credit and credit card journey don't forget to hit the bell notifications down the bottom left corner so that way you guys can stay up to date for whenever I drop my next video. Be a good person, be safe, be smart, and remember, credit is your life. Peace.